Welcome to episode 53 of Tools in the Hall. After Dark. This is not the longest tool haul you'll ever see, but maybe it's the best. I don't know. We're going to go through some tools that you have not seen before. Uh, and then we got some cool things to go over afterwards. Some new stuff that I have in inventory and also stuff that's going right out to a customer that, uh, that he ordered just last week. So let's get right to it. I've been showing you these a lot in the last few tool hauls. This is a 20 piece master screwdriver set from gear wrench. It has a big selection of all your regular Phillips and slotted screwdrivers as well as micro drive and torque screwdrivers and it has two stubbies up at the top there. Hex bolsters at the base of the handles on the larger screwdrivers so that you can attach a wrench to it and get extra torque. It's a good medium duty set of screwdrivers. If you need a heavy duty set, look at the ones from Mayhew. And if you need something that perhaps fits a little more exacting, look at the JIS compliant screwdrivers from Vessel. But these are a terrific everyday set of screwdrivers. It's the regular set that I keep in inventory. Uh, I got a moth flying around. Dang it. Hold on, I gotta kill them off. Talk amongst yourselves while I take out a moth. Come on, moth, where are you? Show yourself. The problem when you take out moths is that it can be messy. Oh, it's not a moth. I don't know what it is, but it's gonna go down. Patience will win the day. I found him. Gone. We can resume. Where was I? Screwdrivers. Vessel for the JIS compliant ones, Mayhew for the heavy duty ones, and Gear Wrench for the terrific everyday medium duty screwdriver set. Lifetime warranty on every one that's in there. I see very few break, um, but they're easy enough to replace if and when they do. So. On the truck right now, they're $140, I think, for the set. I don't service a lot of paint and body shops, but the ones I do service usually focus on custom work. And one of the guys asked me to get him a belt sander. This is the Air Power Belt Sander by Astro. This is their smaller of their two offerings. This one has a 13 inch long by 3 8 wide sanding belt on it. And he didn't want to spend a ton of money. so. In an effort to find my customer something that he could afford, but was good enough to go through all the duty cycles he'd be putting it through, because he's going to be relying on it a lot. I settled, on, I settled on the Astro one for him, and this is the 3036 is a part number on this one if you're interested. Uh, has speed control down here, nice paddle trigger, just a plain simple. Uh, Adjustable head here that you just uh, loosen the screw on so you can rotate that around. And I mean, he could have gone with DynaBraid if he wanted to spend a boatload of money, but that was out of his price range. So for $178, he's doing this one. And I feel good about the quality of the Astro ones. I have sold these in the past without a problem at all. And I know that they're durable enough to put up with the work cycles he'll be giving it and for under $200 it's tough to beat this quality for the price. In the box comes a 40, 60, and 80 grit belt and it's easy enough to buy replacements by the 10-pack. I have a brand new customer 
who was interested in buying a Power Probe 3, which is a standard Power Probe diagnostic tool. Whenever somebody refers to a Power Probe, they're not referring to the brand name, which is Power Probe, rather, they're usually referring to the Power Probe 3, which is a particular version of their most popular diagnostic tool. There are Power Probe 4s, and you can buy just a tool by itself, or you can get them in kits that have a lot of other accessories. And when he was comparing pricing, with uh, the Power Probe 3 with the piercing probes, he was then looking at the Master Kit and he decided to go with the Master Kit. This is the Power Probe 3 Master Kit and it has the diagnostic unit down here and your extensions with all your, your cable clamps and uh, an extra, um, rather an extra 20 foot extension, your piercing probes, probe adapters, cigarette lighter adapter there, and it's a complete kit that contains uh, clip sets, a one foot lead, a two foot lead, a six foot lead, two four millimeter adapters, alligator clip adapters, the probe tips, and it will give you a level of versatility in your diagnostics that you wouldn't normally have or if you just had the Power Probe 3. It is very handy, especially when you're working on larger vehicles to have the extra 20 foot extension. He's working on trash trucks. So if he has to go from the cab around back to check lights and stuff, he's going to need that extension. And he also wants the, all the tips and accessories that come with it. So for the incremental difference in cost between the plain Power Probe 3 and this kit, he's gonna get the kit. Right now they're on the truck for $274.99. Now, if you don't know how to use a Power Probe, they're not difficult to learn, but it's gonna take some time and some patience to get to understand how it works and all the different applications that you can use them for. Basically, the Power Probe 3s just do a couple of basic things. They check voltage, they check continuity, they give you ground, and you can inject power into a component to see if it functions. So it makes troubleshooting easy if you understand the logical flow of a signal path through an electrical circuit. There's lots of YouTube videos that people have made on how to use Power Probes and what applications they're for. If you want to dig into those a little bit, some some guys really put out some pretty good videos on, on basic functionality. How do, you, how do I test fuses? How do I check ground? How do I inject voltage and all the rest of it? Easy to understand, and if you sit down with a power probe and you watch some good videos, it even comes with a DVD that you can pop in your CD, uh, pop in your computer if your computer even has a DVD drive anymore. But there's lots of good material and some good sources of information so it's not difficult to learn. And you sit down with the video and you run through a few different tests that you might wanna get good at. It's a great way to do it. And before long, you'll be a subject matter expert, which is where you wanna be with these because it will greatly reduce the amount of time that it will take you to diagnose some fairly tricky problems. And I used one myself recently on my truck to try to nail down an electrical issue that I was having with my with my tail lights and the marker lights on the box of the truck. But not being a, te a technician myself, my skills and knowledge are limited, but I could go a certain way with the power probe. I could check all the lights to make sure they did function by injecting power into them. And then I could start tracing it back to see where the failure point was. At some point though, I reached a limit of my, of my expertise because I don't really have any, but a good buddy of mine, Cass Nichols and another buddy, uh, Robert Whitley, who you have both seen on this channel, came over to, to help me out and they quickly nailed the problem down and solved it for me and I'm grateful for all their help. But they used uh, the snap-on version of the Power Probe to quickly isolate stuff and as I'm talking to Robert about it, he said how he's very interested in getting the Power Probe 3 because he actually likes it a little bit better than the snap-on unit. So there's, there's a few advantages including some improved uh, ergonomics over the snap-on unit which has this pistol grip and it's kind of difficult to see the display. Uh, this guy is is much easier, I think, to use in, in confined spaces, which, you know, a lot of the times that's where you're going to be using it. Luckily, uh, the, the wiring on my truck is fairly open, and a lot of the work that they had to do with it was uh, on the, uh, along the chassis toward the back where it's, it's pretty open underneath. But the long and short of it is it made that job fairly easy. They got it done in short order, and they, they fixed my lights, and I'm very grateful to them for all their help because... You know, it feels really good to have friends, and when you have friends that have those those kinds of skills and capability who are 
uh, you know, happy to help you out in a time of need and get you back on the road quickly, man, nothing feels better. So my, my deepest gratitude to, to Cass and Robert for their help solving that problem. And, you know, I had the truck in their shop. Uh, this is like every week for the past three weeks. It was getting some AC work done and uh, power steering pump issues and a couple of other things. So, you know, it, oh, and the radiator crapped out on me. So there was there was a few things that uh, that was in the shop for. So I'm glad to give them the business where I can. And I, I, it's nice to have guys that you can lean on and rely on and, and who are there to help. So thanks again, Cass and Robert. Appreciate it. I am a big fan of Streamlight because they have such good quality products and most of their stuff has lifetime warranties on them and services are easy. They have these terrific, fairly inexpensive micro stream USB lights. They have multiple colors. This one is blue. This one is called Coyote. It's brown and they have one that's in red and it has this really handy clip on it that you can use both for your pocket or for the brim of your ball cap. It has a charging cord that comes into package and for I think $50, 250 lumens on high, lifetime warranty, runs for one and a half hours on a full charge on high, tough to beat. For a small compact light, great for inspections, terrific to give to your lady friends or your daughters or kids and you know if they need a light at night or, or, or your parents if they have trouble seeing like mine do and I, I love giving out lights to 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 my folks because God knows they can use them and it's it's terrific when you can uh, you, you have this fairly inexpensive small compact easy to use light that's great for lots of different applications great gift ideas around Christmas time too uh, that's why they sell so much. I think just after Thanksgiving, these and the Pocket Mate lights from Streamlight are huge sellers around that time. Everyone's looking to bulk up on some great stocking stuffers, and these are terrific ideas for that. I really enjoy when customers put me to the test and see if there are deals that I can meet or beat from my competition, because I can usually do that, especially because so much of what we sell between tool trucks is all the same exact stuff. And now that Matco is a Milwaukee distributor, that has actually worked in my favor because they publicize sales and deals and bundles that Milwaukee puts together and has available to all retailers like myself. But they have the advantage because they get, they get uh, advanced word on what's going to be on sale and they can put together these deals in their own flyer where I don't have that advantage but I have a customer who came to me with the Maco flyer and he said, can you meet this deal or beat this deal? And in fact, I might have the flyer here as a matter of fact. Hang on. I have the Maco flyer number 11. This is from May 20th to June 11th. And on page 12, they have Milwaukee bundle deals. You will get a free 4 amp hour battery. Sorry. You get a free 5 amp hour battery if you purchase any one of these bundles. And my customer was interested in getting a cutoff tool and the angle die grinder. And because Milwaukee publishes these deals to all their retailers, we all have them available to us. So I was very happy to be able to get the right angled eye grinder, the cutoff tool, and a battery, and meet the Maco deal. So for, what was it? Yeah, for $69.90, he's getting the deal. Now, the thing that I had to do was I had to buy at least two of these in order to get the bundle myself, which is great because now I have this for my one customer and a whole other second bundle that I can either sell all together for the same bundle price or break up the bundle and sell stuff individually and offer discounts to people. Because uh, when I have to buy everything all at once, then the per unit price goes down and I can afford to do promotions with it or, uh, or, or make my own bundles or whatever it is. So I'm very happy to be able to do stuff like this. And it's all because uh, my, my, my good customer, Roscoe Parker, asked me to. And I'm, so thank you, Roscoe. I appreciate the opportunity to meet the competition and uh, or beat the competition and keep you happy and keep you in tools you know on my truck and that's it's very gratifying when you have people who would prefer to do business with you 
And they tell you that. And they, the reason why he comes to me with this stuff is, yeah, he could go to the Matco truck and get the deal on the flyer, but he came to me to ask if I could get it for him. And I'm very grateful that he would do that because, uh, you know, it feels, it feels great. You feel like a million bucks when you have customers who prefer to do business with you. And, uh, you know, it, it keeps me happy. It keeps me motivated. Uh, it lets me know that people are appreciating the way I'm doing business. And, and it means the world to me. So thanks again, Roscoe. Appreciate you. Ooh, I think that's it for the tools. Now let's do Tool Hall After Dark. First, you have seen uh, my good friend Sammy Salinas in live chats before, and he's an active participant when we ever do live streams. And great guy, I see him every Wednesday night. He works third shift at Capital Metro and just a, a, just a terrific guy. Great tool customer, great gun customer. In one of my previous tool haul videos that we also had an after dark component to, I showed you a Ruger LCP 380 Max that he purchased from me after a weird story he gave me about shopping an academy to try to get a gun. Uh, when he came to pick up that gun, he brought with him uh, the tried and true Glock 19 that he wants me to sell for him on consignment. So this guy is a Gen 4 Glock 19. Chamber to nine millimeter. The mag is out, the action is open. And this is very similar to the Gen uh, 3 in that it has the knurling on the grip for your fingers. And this has though uh, the larger mag release here, but I think it's a, the regular old slide release here. This is um, just such a terrific firearm because it's ubiquitous. Seems like everybody who owns a Glock owns a Glock 19. If you were to ask me what I think the perfect firearm is, I would say that the Glock 19 is as close to perfect as you can get. Strong statement, I know. I hear some people disagreeing with me. You hear me out, and here's why. It's chambered in 9mm, so it's inexpensive to shoot. And if you want to use it as a carry option, it's not too large. It has good stopping power, fairly high capacity to the magazine, and it's super reliable. These things have been stress tested and come out smiling every time. They don't generally have feeding problems, which means they'll chew through almost anything that you put in it. And they're simple and easy to take apart and put back together again. That's the one thing I really like about Glock is they built everything, all their models are in the same platform. They are super easy to take apart and put back together again, which for me is an important criteria for choosing which gun I want to own. I don't want to have to struggle with disassembling and reassembling a gun. I want it to be as easy and foolproof as possible because part of the fun for me is taking apart a gun and cleaning it and getting to know it a little bit and seeing the mechanics of it. I don't want to have to struggle with it though. And the easy part of these is uh, you get a Slide the slide back just a little bit. You pull down a release here and one on the other side. And then you slide the slide forward and it comes off. And then you remove the spring and pop out the barrel. And that's it. You are field stripped into four parts. There you go. Just from here, it's a simple matter of just cleaning the bore, getting any residue off the mechanism, lightly lubricating the slide contact areas, and you're good to go. And putting it back together is a very simple matter of just inserting the barrel back into the slide, dropping that into place, taking the spring, setting that back in place, and just sliding the slide back onto the frame. Rack it back and you're done. And uh, what's easier than that? It easy to have a, has a mount on the front for a light and or a laser. And I understand why people don't like the Glock. For all the advantages I just mentioned, there are some disadvantages. Some people think it's an ugly gun. I personally like the utilitarian look to it. It is not elegant by any stretch of the imagination, 
but I do think it looks kind of cool. It's boxy, yes. It's squared off, yes. But I don't know. I kind of like that. It has some, has some, uh, some utilitarian-looking charm to it, if you will, if there is such a thing. Uh, the other thing that people tend to not like about the Glocks are the way the trigger guard meets the grip right here. This contour is not so friendly to your finger. And you it, it does rub there, uh, and that can be uncomfortable for people. And I get that. I'm, I'm, I, I agree with you on that one. I kind of wish that, it, that they would cut that a little deeper to give it some more relief. And the other thing is the grip is not the most comfortable for my sized hands. I... I, I tend to find that I'm I'm rotating the gun a little bit this way, you know, so that my the web of my hand is not exactly in, in the back strap, uh, in order to make it a little more comfortable for my finger pad to rest on the trigger. I I I think that Sig Sauer's fit my hands better than Glocks do, but I don't own any Sig Sauer's. I own I own some Glocks myself. Um, with that said, uh, they're an outstanding all around option for size. Uh, portability, if you're carrying, it's it's a good target gun because uh, it's got a, a four inch barrel on it, so it's fairly accurate. Ammo is fairly cheap to purchase and shoot, and they're a ton of fun because they're so reliable. Uh, the sights on it are, are, are pretty easy to acquire. A white dot sight in the front with a with a white blade in the back, and the pricing is really rather pretty good on these. A brand new a Glock G3. Our Glock G9, a Glock, <laughs> yeah, G Gen 3, G19, wow, uh, will cost you around 550 bucks. Uh, the Gen 5s are going around 600 bucks. This one is used, so I'm selling it for 425. Uh, I'm, I have a feeling that by the time you see this one, this will be sold because Glocks never last long when I have them in inventory, and uh, you know I'll. Uh, I'll uh, let you know how it goes. Should be uh, should be pretty quick to sell. I'm happy that Sammy brought it to me, um, and he also wants to do some Cerakote projects, which I think is really cool. And as I gather some more information on that, I'm also going to shoot a video on it because I want to show you what the whole process is like for doing a Cerakote job. He wants some custom work done that's going to look really slick, and I'm I'm stoked to shepherd that whole process through because it's new, it's different, uh, it's a whole different angle. To, to doing what I do for a living. And I, I really like the challenge of being the guy who is who sits between my customer and the Cerakoter and facilitates that whole thing because it's a tremendous amount of satisfaction when it comes out right. All right, next gun. I've had a customer saving up for this one for a while. This is a Bushmaster XM15. AR-15 chambered in 223 and 556 has a collapsible stock. 16-inch barrel with an M-lock style handguard, and this is M-lock because of these rectangular holes in them. You see they're on the sides and on the bottom, and you can use that to attach all kinds of M-lock compatible accessories to. You can put a forward grip on this. You can mount a light or a laser. Uh, you can put a bipod on it if you want to rest it. And it has a Picatinny rail that runs the entire length of the gun front to back. So you can put iron sights, flip up sights, you can put 45 degree sights on these red dot sights or optics. And it's a terrific, terrific setup. Great platform for expandability in the future. Plugs in it so it's safe. Let's open the action. Remove the plug. Magazine's out. Action is open. And you can also put sling swivels on here. I mean, the, the, the possibilities for an M-Lock handguard are endless because it has a swivel back here for the sling, but uh, nothing up front because you can choose what you put on this. Wonderful, wonderful gun. Very versatile. Great for target shooting. <clears throat> Some people hunt with these, and I think they're a wonderful option regardless of what you use it for because 223 and 556 ammo is rather inexpensive to shoot so you can have yourself a great all-day uh, adventure at the shooting range and put a ton of rounds down range and have a lot of fun poking holes in paper and shooting targets and 
uh, spend some time sliding this thing in, which I think is part of the therapeutic fun of shooting a new gun, you know, some new optics or sights on, and just get a chance to get to know it and have a lot of fun with it. My customer who bought this was saving up for a while uh, in, a, in, in a savings account that I set up for him. And uh, it was one of these deals where, you know, he didn't, I don't think he knew, know exactly what he wanted, but uh, he just wanted to start putting money away. And he started doing that. To the point where he, he got a bunch of money in the account and he was ready to buy something. And then we started talking about AR-15 options for him. And he doesn't know a whole lot about them, but he knew that he wanted one because there's a lot of talk about them. He's got a lot of friends who own them. I believe he shot them in the past and really liked them. So it's a great opportunity to discuss what's available for his budget. And if you have a budget of around $800, you can get yourself a very nice AR-15. 800 to $1,000 will get you in a really good quality firearm that'll last you a long time that you can hand down throughout your family if you want, or if it ever comes time to trade in or sell it, it'll hold its value very well. And, and they're, they're just great all around solid platforms to be shooting on. Um, the AR platform also has a 308 version that's called an AR-10, and you can buy shotguns in 12 gauge in the AR platform, and that's called the AR-12. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for sticking around to see all the fun gun stuff at the end. And keep watching the channel because in addition to the cool Cerakote stuff that I was talking, with you about that we're going to do for Sammy Salinas. We're going to do some air tool repair videos. And of course, we have lots of tools in the haul videos. But I got a great suggestion from a customer today who thought that I should do a video just for the spouses, wives, and girls, and significant others of technicians to talk about the value of the tool truck and to answer the question, why do you spend so much money on tools? So look for that to come down the line, probably in the next couple of months because my shooting schedule for videos is about six weeks out. So please do me a favor and click down here now to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, use a tool, don't be one.